Hi there, my name is Cormac Rogan and I'll be briefly explaining the Loeffler and Posh method of creating the Merton model using Excel. Um, first of all, just a bit of brief background to the Merton model itself. Um, the Merton model uses the inputs of the Black-Scholes formula, which was brought to the masses in the early 70s, and uses these inputs in order to create a likely default probability. Um, within the Merton model, uh, D2 is the distance to default, ND2 is the probability of the firm's asset value will be greater than the default threshold, and as such, N minus D2 is the probability of default. Um, as such, this is the key to estimating credit risk. Um, so just get a few of them technical terms out of the way, and we'll be seeing them again later over here on the right-hand side. And first off, I'll briefly go through some of the, the inputs and the data. So the date is from the 31st of the 12th, 2013, which we see here, um, to the 31st of the 12th, 2014. So it encapsulates a full year's data. Um, here we have the, it's all Bank of Ireland data, by the way. Here we have Bank of Ireland market equity. And the way in which we had to get this market equity value was to get the share price and also to get the number of shares in circulation on that day. And um, so here we have the share price at 25 cent on the 31st of the 12th, 2013. And the number of shares in issue were 32.363 million. And that's how we got our market equity value of 8155.54. Next up, we have the Bank of Ireland book liabilities. And um, so this data was accessed on Yahoo Finance. And we can see here that it's 124 two four four um, and that's values in millions um, here we have the log risk-free rate which is at six percent but we're using a discount um, factor value which is why we can see that the numbers are slowly converging towards zero but i believe they stop at 3.4 percent um, which is our log risk-free rate that we'll be using over here on the right hand side later on um, here we have the share price returns, and that's simply taking the log returns of so F4, which would be the 1st of the 1st, 2014, divided by F3, which is the share price value on the 31st of the 12th, 2013. Um, next up, we have the asset values, or which are also known here as the iterations K, and that is gotten by adding your equity and book liabilities as any accountant knows, will give you your total asset value. There is also another way that we worked out how to find out total asset value, but it's slightly different um, from our asset values in column K. Um, and the reason that we can put down to this might be the way data was input. Um, there may have been a slight issue with the formula, or there may have been a slight issue um, with how the data was presented on Yahoo Finance. Um, but I'll briefly go through how we found out the total asset using formulas on Excel. Um, first off, we have C3, which is the market equity value. We have D3, which is the book liabilities. Um, this is multiplied by the exponential of E3, which, as you know, is the log risk-free rate. Multiply this by the normal distribution on, on the Black-Scholes formula here for L3, which is the asset volatility iterations. We'll, we'll go through that later on and how we got that. Um, D3, again, is the book liabilities. E3, again, is the log risk free rate. And I3, which is what I should have said for this, is the asset value iterations. Um, and that is how we got the total asset value using formulas using Excel. It does slightly differ, as you can see, but um, it goes in the same direction. So if we have 132 and 125 here, then you can see that we, as it goes up to 134, so too does our column J here. Um, so the asset volatility iterations formula was how we got the standard deviation of the log returns of the assets over here, which is the same way 
that we got our share price returns over here. So we got the standard deviation of the log returns iteration of all the total assets. And we multiplied this by the total number of days for the year, which was 260. And this is to the power of 0.5 to get a standard deviation. Um, we also got a sum of squared values. And the way in which we did this was to get sum x and y2 um, for all our um, total assets and how we work them out by adding equity and liabilities while also um, using the total asset values um, using the formula in Excel. If you go over here to the right hand side of the spreadsheet and work through the Merton model um, using the inputs we've seen already. Um, here we have the asset values at AT which is at L264 so if we went all the way down to sell L264 we can see that that is the total assets at that date and the other outputs will also be taken from the last line um, or at row 264. Okay, now we'll go to the asset volatility which we've worked out here on the left hand side and that is 3.35% and um, the asset drift rate we can see is at 0.32% and um, that's also taken from the data on the left hand side here we have the balance sheet data of the total liabilities it's 122 it's also taken from the last iteration row 264 and um, moving slightly downwards we have the distance to default which is worked out formulaically and um, so we get the log returns of 07 which is the asset value plus 09 which is the asset drift rate minus 08 which is the asset volatility to the power of 2 divided by 2 minus the log returns of 011 which is the total liabilities all divided by 08 which again is the asset volatility moving on we can work out our n minus d2 which as previously mentioned is the default probability and that's taken as the norms dist of minus um, 013 which is the distance to default moving slightly down again we have the data assumptions so we have the equity value at ET which is 10123 which is rounded to 10124 and that's at the, the last iteration on um, the equity value we have equity volatility which is worked out already on the left hand side if I move the mouse up we'll see that it comes from column G and that's just taking the standard deviation of that moving slightly onwards again we have the total liabilities which matches off with the liabilities we previously mentioned and we have the risk-free rate which is the last iteration of risk-free rate um, which as previously mentioned was taken at a discount rate discount factor um, the horizon or the timeline is for one year which we mentioned from the first column is the last day in 2013 to the last day in 2014 um, the unknowns in this are the asset value um, but as we can see it's taken by adding up the equity and adding up the liabilities to get total assets. Asset volatility as such is worked out again by taking the equity volatility, multiplying it by the equity and dividing it by asset values. And we have the model values for Black Scholes formulae. D2 is worked out using the Black Scholes formula. D1 and D2 both worked out using Black Scholes formulae. The equity value at ET is taken using another norms distribution formula, also it's Black Shoals. And equity volatility is worked out again using Black Shoals. So the key insight here was that we were able to work out a default probability um, using those methods but most importantly using the Merton model method which does use the Black Shoals method and um, we got a default probability of 0.72% um, which using the data here and banks being highly leveraged um, 
would make some sort of sense. And thank you for listening, and that is all.